Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trail Talk. We're here. Uh, yeah, I'm Edie. And I am Mary. And uh, we are not weather professionals. No, we have to, We well, we don't have to, but we would like to preface right by yeah. saying, yeah, we want to just clear the air right off the bat. Um, this is informational only. Right. This and is not associated with, with any weather incident right or um, accreditation right or, yes yeah for that we have not exactly been right. skilled in this area no but we can research and report that information back to you that's right. and that's what we're doing that's right yeah we're just here to help you all out i mean it is that time of year i know and i don't like it yeah that, i mean we I already, already we've already experienced our first oh, sirens yes here in duncan yeah. um, just last weekend in yeah fact, saturday yeah, just a few days ago so anyway um it's high time that we talk about tornadoes in oklahoma i mean and why you know why are the these things happening here in oklahoma what is what is the thing? So we're just going to kind of give you a little bit of information about all of those things. Yeah, kind and of why, why we are what we are. Right. Yeah. Why, we're not just doomed. Yes. Okay. Yes, for real. And we we talked about that maybe a banner should be going across the bottom <laughs> saying, you know, just that we are not, whether we are not reporting any events, we're just giving you some facts. Right. So anyway. We'll, we'll get off that little... Um, and we may say it again course. before we're off, though. Yeah, just to remind everyone. Because <laughs> we, we do to... sound like we have Yes, been. we do. We, and we can um, pretend like like I can look off screen and do okay. some of this stuff. That's right. Like, and I can be off screen. And, and I can, can be, be off yeah. screen and talking over you. Okay. We're going <laughs> to jump right in with that one. Um, okay. So typically... People are familiar with this tornado yes. alley. If you live here, you have heard that mm -hmm. phrase. Yeah, you've heard people say tornado alley. Um, but here's the deal. Um, people will assume that May and June are the May, the most um, eventful months right. when it comes to um, tornado, tornadic activity. Yeah. Um, really, I think like mid-March to August is the most... Um, Eventful. realistic yeah um although october yeah has been on the rise it seems like we we're getting later mm -hmm. in the year as mm -hmm. a january to december year yeah i kind of am thinking you know after doing some of the studying about this i think you know how um right now um it the days are getting warmer and longer and all of that and that you know that has That's something good. to do with the tornadoes well in october the days are getting shorter, but they are staying, it's staying warm longer yeah. in the year. Yeah, just like we, I think we've said that before on here, uh, you know, the seasons have changed. Mm -hmm. We don't rest necessarily like, we're just now getting to like the warmer time of the year when right. previous years before spring break, you know, you were wearing shorts and a lot of people already had tans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it seems like the, those, months are shifting. Mm -hmm. shifting and so together. yeah, I think October just might be catching the end of it where mm -hmm. before maybe it was more August, August time. September, I mean, right. when we go, to, we both um, go to OU football games, mm -hmm. and it is sweltering hot in September. It, at is, those so games. Hot. it is so hot. Man, it is hot. And, and you get all those people in there. Yeah, yeah. And so um, it, I mean, it's definitely warmer later yeah. in the year than it than it was before sure. but at any rate um yes october's become kind of the secondary severe mm -hmm. weather season mm -hmm. yes. um but so the tornado hot spots across the u.s and i think that this dixie alley right here i think it's picking up more action you have heard a lot for like louisiana those kinds of areas getting the tornadoes yes and like um let's see where is yeah, here's <laughs> this is tennessee and uh -huh. kentucky i mean they've been getting a lot it's almost like this is almost shifted uh-huh yeah exactly that's moved over too but that would leave oklahoma still yeah, right in still either of those tornado there. alleys yeah but they kind of have it broken down into three and then this northeast and this mid-Atlantic, I mean, lots of tornadoes have popped up here. Mm -hmm. And some of these, I think, well, that one's not so much on the coast. Kind this of more one, uh, hurricane related? Yes. 
they spin off a, a hurricane because they're they get on land and that kind of changes yeah everything um but um <clears throat> Anyway, Again, we're not we're not meteorologists. Right, right. But Oklahoma City is one of the cities that has the most or the highest rate of tornadoes in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you of course, we're not telling you anything if you live in that area. Um, Moore has not only had oh, man. a lot of tornadoes, but a lot Deadly. of really destructive mm -hmm. and they have they are some of those tornadoes that get on the ground and stay on the ground for a long time. Long periods of time. You know, I don't know. And wide, huge, yes, huge yeah. spans. Yes, really big ones, not just a like little. Miles. Yeah. Um, so Tornado Alley, there's a few reasons why this area is so prone to tornadoes. And it's the, the whole um, way tornadoes are formed. So when a tornado forms, there are three factors, um, warm, humid air, cool, dry air, and hot, dry air. And those three things combine, and the humid air is coming from the Gulf of from Mexico. Moisture. Yeah, the cool air is when the jet stream comes flying down from Canada, and it's got that cooler oh, air. And then the hot, dry air comes from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And those three things seem to collide right over Oklahoma. They like to mix right above. Yeah, so the, um, and there are all sizes, strengths, shapes. We're going to look at all the different mm -hmm. types of right. tornadoes as far as, you know, that, what they call them. But you have a wind shear, which is fast moving winds that are yeah, horizontal, horizontal. Um, and they make this spinning horizontal tube. Mm -hmm. And then you have this updraft where this warm, uh, buoyant air that's near the ground starts going up. Yeah, horizontal. Mm -hmm. to um, a, into, into a vertical. Into, into, yeah, it becomes vertical. It, it makes the horizontal vertical. And then the stronger of the two vertices, vertices um, it created by the updraft because it splits that horizontal. It goes, the updraft kind of splits mm -hmm. it and one becomes the part, the big part of the thunderstorm, the other part kind of dies off. Yeah. And then you get these upper level winds. That's when they talk about, you know, the tops are, you know, they'll say, you know, 30,000 feet or, you know, 20,000 feet or whatever. When those tops are up there, then they have these rotating winds going too, and all these things just combine. And I mean, you just have the right time of year and all the right conditions. And then that's when you get the bingo yes. bango. Yeah. Um, now only a fraction of these supercells that are created actually form tornadoes. Right. They actually, you know, get that far. There could be the twisting and things, but it's not an actual tornado. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've I've watched large like, circulations oh, yes. Yes. of clouds, you know, but they're they seem to be kind of low, low right. and kind of they're not as fast moving. You can mm -hmm. see the rotation, but it's not actually yeah, it's not like a you know, like a coming to the like when you ride a ride, uh -huh. you know, and it and, yeah, and it like kind of you feel the like all the forces and everything, mm -hmm. but like the closer or like you drop like you drop a penny on those things that go oh, around yeah, like right. this and while it's going around it's getting closer to the hole and the closer to the hole it gets the faster it goes right. until it gets down in there and those that's the thing that they start going faster the closer it the vertex of it yeah, the yeah it comes down together so okay that whole explanation is probably all the evidence you need to <laughs> understand when we say we're not professionals <laughs> we're like that thingy magic that goes there and then that that whoopsie do yeah you definitely don't want to that's why we have pictures <laughs> Because we know what we're saying. Yeah. But this helps you to know what we're saying. Exactly. Okay. So these tornadoes that, that actually do form, though, they can have a top speed of like 250 miles an hour. Some of them have been clocked as, as much as 300 oh, miles an hour. Um, and they can 
be a, a mile wide and they can stay on the ground for 50 miles or longer. They can drop down, touch the ground for a few seconds and go back up, or they can stay on the ground like for hours. And just boing, 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 yeah, boing, boing, yeah, yeah, just, I mean, you know, we just, talk about, we refer back to tornado events in Oklahoma by saying the May 3rd tornado, right. the May 20th tornado. And those are some that got on the ground and just stayed on the ground. The May 3rd tour, I mean, it went across so much of the state and just stayed and, on the yeah. ground and it just got bigger and it meaner. Did. A lot of the times these tornadoes that you see, once they're on the ground, it's like, okay, you know, I'm full, I'm done. I'm, yeah. You, they fizzle out and they're done. This uh -huh. one, and it just, oh, Man, it just it, had an evil look to it, it too. Yeah, it, it really did. Um, but um, even though we live in Tornado Alley, I mean, we're, you know, this is right, like we're right here. Tornadoes happen all around the world. Yeah, it's, every state has. And yeah, every state mm -hmm. in the United States has experienced mm -hmm. a tornado, at least one tornado. Um, and there are about 1,000 tornadoes a year in the, just in the U.S. But they have also, um, happened in other countries all around the world. Yeah, that was what was amazing. Yeah, too. where was Places that? that, that it has been. Been. Uh, uh, oh, Great Britain, India, Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that I, I places was, like that, I wonder if they even have a system in place, you know, yeah, like precautions, yeah. Or like a yep. warning system or shelter, right? Because even know what to do. I, I just, um, I mean, what kind of conditions happen on a, a, a small island like the UK? Mm -hmm. It's not very big. And where does the warm air come from? I mean, I, it's the Atlantic Ocean and the English Channel. Right. I mean, is the English Channel that warm that it produces that? Or is it just a, a phenomenon? Uh, a, yeah. Yeah. Just an obscure, random, everything. All the conditions just happen to have it be, be yeah, right, right there. there. I don't know. But anyway, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, I've seen for, in the information I, between 70 and 80 deaths a year mm -hmm. is kind Cost, of the average. Yeah. Um, I would say that those numbers have dropped significantly because, because of all of the advances mm -hmm. made in radar. But, you know, um, probably 1,500 injuries. Right. A lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. Which we would take injuries over death. I exactly. Mean, anytime. Exactly. Yeah. So as you know, um, with these tornadoes that happen, a lot of other weather things come with them. Right. I mean, you get, you have um, hail, mm -hmm. rain, rain, lightning, um, just gusts of wind. Got, yeah, exactly. Straight line winds that can uh, be tear just up. as damaging sometimes. Right. Yeah. Um, I, my mom and dad, one time my mom was standing at her kitchen window and um, this was probably 20, 25 years ago. And um, it was storming, it, there was lightning and um, she just looked out and saw everything. It lightened again just a few minutes later and their barn was gone. <laughs> and it was- Now you see it, now you yeah, don't. Yeah, and it was some straight line winds had just blown through there. And I mean, I say it was straight line winds, some of the, the tin that was on the top of the barn, well, it was in the neighbor's field. It was about a quarter of a mile away. It was, it was just a crazy yeah. kind of thing. I don't think we ever knew really everything that happened, mm -hmm. but at any rate, there it's, it's crazy stuff. Um, so the, okay, this says about one in a thousand storms creates a supercell and one in five or six supercells creates a tornado. So, I mean, even though we live in Tornado Alley, we live in the place where most tornadoes happen, Occurs. or at least historically, right. um, it takes a lot of, I mean, as far as statistically speaking, storm. yeah, to create that tornado yeah. condition. Right. I've never personally seen one in person. Right. I've been close to where they have been uh -huh. and gotten the heck out of Dodge real fast. Mm -hmm. But one time we one. were um, in McAllister 
and Kevin and I had gone to Walmart and um, his, the kids were at his mom's house and um, people at Walmart started freaking out and they came over the loudspeaker and told everyone to go to the dressing rooms. Mm. Oops, like, okay, that it, gonna... yeah, that little uh, plywood uh, door, yeah, that's going to keep me safe and all 500 right. of us in the store are going to fit in this uh -huh. area. Anyway, one of the workers back there, she was really panicking. And so Kevin and I just made our way to the front door mm -hmm. and we stepped outside and the funnel cloud was hanging down out of the storm clouds and it just we just watched and it just went right over our heads was it eerie and feeling like yeah you yeah, tell a difference was, in the hair yeah it was it was weird it was that kind of stillness that's what i've always heard that right before mm -hmm. like it'll stop raining the wind calms mm -hmm. and then it's just like boom yep. it just happens and and it just went right over the top of us. And I think it dropped down miles past over McAllister. Past yeah, um, <clears throat> whatever direction it was headed. Mm -hmm. It was it was weird, but that's the, that was like my visual yeah, yeah. of a tornado. Right. So anyway. Um, and I mean, there's other things too, like there's related to the tornado, like the water spouts. Oh yeah. And the dirt dev or the dust yeah. devil. Let's, let's look through some of these uh, kind of types of tornadoes. Okay. Now Mary's going to kind of freak out here because even though I've never been in one, I, this is like my the, all time, yeah, the, like scary movie here. Keep, I can't keep, watch kind of Twister. You can't watch nope. Twister mm -mm. where the cow gets cut up in the tornado. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, that's classic, classic. <laughs> Gives me nightmares right there. Okay. Yeah. This rope and you can see why they call it, it like a lasso. lasso. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's all twisted down. And you can see, I mean, it's on the ground. The dirt yeah, is flying. Say, this is not cloud. This mm -hmm. is dirt. And this is one of your late afternoon storms, probably mm -hmm. the most um, common time of day usually when like this four happens. Four to seven is usually. Yeah, uh, just because that just seems to lend itself to all those conditions. The sun's going down. Yeah, mm -hmm. temperatures change. Every, yeah. Um, so here's the rope. Um, then we have the rain wrapped. I don't know if you can make out. Here's the tornado kind of in here. Like there. Yeah, rain wrapped. Yeah. I think these are the tornadoes that um, meteorologist David Payne is kind of notorious for coming up <laughs> with like wild uh, <laughs> names for referring them to them. Anyway, so yeah, this rain wrap. This one's harder to see. I was going to say, imagine at night. Yeah, whenever there's not even any sunlight out. Mm -hmm. at night, you have to watch for the for lightning the, flashes. the lightning or the electrical flashes where it tears through the, the high line mm -hmm. wires mm -hmm. and um, causes all those to flash as they break. Um, then we have a satellite tornado. So this one is not coming out uh, from this lowering here. It just drops down kind of out of from the outer edge. So this would make me think that this is a, there is more than one cell, you know, multiple cells right. up in there. Right. But yeah, this one's called, yeah, we've got, I don't know, either a crazy person or a storm chaser right here. Uh, in my mind, is, if you're a storm chaser, you're crazy anyway. Yeah, this is crazy. foul or whatever <laughs> that guy's name for News 9. He's right there in the middle. I don't know if that's him or not. I'm just, I'm dropping names. Um, here we have the multiple vortex. And if I remember correctly, May 3rd was a multiple vortex tornado. So you have all yeah. of that. Yeah, we have at least two coming in here. And I don't know, there, yeah, there could be more. We've got some rain wrap going on here. Um, you can see, you, even though it doesn't look like they're on the ground, here's the evidence right. that it's touched down, the dirt and everything's so blowing up. up. Um, anyway, uh, Tornadoes are you can just, see over here. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not like these clouds, you know, totally in, drench the sky. Right. I mean, yeah, it's cloudy and hazy, but, mm -hmm. you know, you can definitely see a difference. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, this is the thing, I think, but the difference between like a tornado and a hurricane. A tornado um, blows up, you know, of course, you, you we know now there it's coming, right? We know the intensity and all that, right? And um, it's here, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. Now it may leave a path of destruction behind, but it's gone. Generally, where, it's like, oh, the birds come out, the sun comes out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, but like a hurricane, you know, it, 
it's a long it's a very long drawn out right. hours and hours and Days. hours of yeah. yeah things happening like that um and so i mean the tornado like i say it hits it's not quite it's as unpredictable predictable yeah yeah that's that's the thing we oh, have the wedge and these are the big daddies that uh you know are a mile yeah. wide i remember stories about the wichita falls tornado this was from probably 50 45 50 years yeah. ago it was a long time ago um and it was a one mile wide mm -hmm. a whole mile wide i just that kind of does that was a tornado stomach. itself that yeah. wasn't just the cloud it came from that yeah. was the actual yeah. circular and so that that does kind of make me feel I mean, weird in my stomach just, just so ominous it. and just mm -hmm. and then look blue sky it true i, I mean, mean sunlight and blue sky it just looks it. like here here it is and mm -hmm. once i'm done throwing my picture tantrum i'll be done out of yeah. the way yeah exactly so oh. these guys are super scary super dangerous <laughs> here's the water spout here's two of them actually Twins. um water spouts can uh can continue and make it to land yeah um and and be uh uh or tornado tornado yeah. on land they form um, on the water though mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's it's just the same situation in the clouds it's just that it happens over the water, water right. instead of land I mean, these little people in these fishing or these little boats out here. I'm thinking, I mean, what what are you gonna do? How um, would you do get out of the way of that? Um, I'm not sure if you just hold tight. Yeah, or you just turn on your little motor and try to <laughs> get out of there. I I don't know. I know they have two to deal with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's your water spout the famous dust devil as a kid it These went on of yeah fun, i i always thought oh my goodness it's a dust devil we just go crazy we sometimes we drive around and look for the yeah look for them to blow up somewhere um they are not associated with thunderstorms mm -hmm. these are just circular winds right and and so they're not really coming from up here going down right. it's it's just that the winds right. are just caught it and yeah and they're and, yeah and so the beauty of this is that the dirt allows you to see what the wind is doing right yeah that's all this is it's, and it, you don't have, there's no fear really it's right yeah fear. it's picked up the dirt and mm -hmm. so now you can see what the wind is doing and then the I've fire i've never seen that tornadoes I've never seen one of those. um when uh empire basically burned that I think it was like on a March 1st or something like that one year winds and and I mean it was it was bad I'm trying probably to remember how many conditions. years ago probably it was 20 years ago probably okay. um maybe 15 maybe about 15 years ago um and uh he was out a co-worker's uh house was the, the flames were coming close and so he had plowed up some dirt and they were they had water hoses and they were wetting the roof mm -hmm. down and everything mm -hmm. and kevin saw these things spinning up i mean he wasn't sure really how he was going to get home he had to drive miles and miles out in the country so and circle around. around yeah to be able to get home um but he said these fire tornadoes they're fire whirl i guess is the real huh. name for them but yeah, he said these things you, you could see. So them. is it heat? Is it flame? Is it? Yeah, it, I mean, it's just, it's again the wind. Just whipping around that. Uh, fire. Whipping the wind, and there's a flame, and it just carries that flame mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those things are, um, these things can, you know, make a, a fire, like a wildfire. Oh, worse. I'm sure. And the intensity of the heat. Oh, I can only imagine. Just um, like, those dry cedar trees that are, I mean, all they have to do is any of those dry trees or those just grasses. Close, probably. Yeah. Yeah. You necessarily mean the flame. The, the heat is so intense that it catches things on fire without the actual flame mm -hmm. having to get to it. Um, 
So uh, those are those are kind of the uh, different types of tornadoes, the characteristics, you know, we've, we've talked about a lot of that. Now, one thing we didn't talk about, we should go back to some of, one of these tornado pictures. This is a good one. How they measure the speed. Uh -huh. Or how they're, yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, I don't know. Categorized? Categorized. I was going to say ranked, but ranked didn't sound like the right that word to you. That makes them sound pretty yeah and they're not, not pretty yeah yeah I something mean, we're giving them a badge or yeah. something yeah, yeah, yeah that's not they're categorized that was good um by uh they use anemometers to measure wind speed and the scientists are using their best estimations based on wind speed radar and then they use the this scale yeah yeah and the destruction that's left they can kind of i guess compare yeah probably what kind of things so, like, um, you know, what has been impaled through something else or just weird things like we went to Universal, they've, they've torn down the twister mm -hmm. ride from the movie, mm -hmm. but um, I got to go like the very last year that they had that and they had like this long hallway with all of the kind of weird things like a piece of straw that was blown through uh, like hey. Not mm -hmm. like a drinking right, straw, right. but like, hey, was forced into a piece of wood or a tree, and just really crazy things. That, I mean, like straw. You put, you take a piece of straw and you touch it, yeah, and, it and you'll break or uh -huh. bend it. Right. But the wind somehow forced force. it into a tree or a piece of wood, lumber. I can't remember which one it was, but I mean, just crazy phenomenons like that. And something else that um, it said that the winds can kill a person if you if you were physically caught up in it rolling you around or throwing you around but most people die from the flying debris mm -hmm. or shrapnel mm -hmm. and the things that are in the air yeah and it reminded me of the may 3rd tornado where the woman got the two by four mm. in her head i mean it's just it's just crazy the way things fly through the air and there's no way to get out of the way. Right. You know, no you way to you know where it's going to go. Yeah. Or land. Or you, yeah. You're trying to protect yourself and keep yourself covered and you might be somewhere protected and then here comes a flying object. Right. Right. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to look a little bit weird whenever right. you're in the cellar or whatever. I have no shame <laughs> in my game. I will put helmets knee pads. I will put it all on. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So they use the Fujita scale. And um, it measures F0 to F5. And now they really, all we ever hear is the enhanced, mm -hmm. the EF mm -hmm. um, scale. And so that's, they compare damage, you know, and things from other tornadoes. And that's how they um, end up uh, with a, the number that they like associate label. with it. Yeah. Um, they, uh, <clears throat> Uh, people like I'm sure you guys saw the pickup that got caught in the tornado Just down recently. it was in Texas yeah. wasn't it and it like flipped this thing and amazing video yeah and then it landed on its wheels and the driver was able to I mean ever so off. just cool like like a stunt driver almost yeah just like he was made to do it yeah drove right out of it I'm sure that whoever the driver was was in a bit of a panic yeah, they might have needed to change their drawers when they got home, <laughs> right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, that's kind of the scale they use. And I'm, I'm sh I mean, they base it on wind speed. I haven't ever seen where like wedge versus rope versus I haven't really I don't heard reference to any of that no. playing into. I mean, sometimes the, the width of how long or, you know, the size of it sometimes does come into play, but as far as how if it's a wedge or a rope mm -hmm. or yeah. rain wrapped. Because it, it does use damage. Mm -hmm. And so when something like this would leave more damage than, than a, rope. a rope one. Yeah. So okay, now we're gonna go to um, my favorite new way of figuring this out. So if you're one of those people, I've been this person before. I still am from time to time. How, what does a tornado watch and a tornado warning? What are they saying? Oh. I don't know which one yeah. it means. Well, even just not even tornado, flood. Right, yeah. Hail, I mean, any of them. Yeah, watch What are you trying to tell warning. me? What okay. are you trying to tell me? So here's the deal. 
a taco watch versus a taco warning. So here we see on the watch, we've got the shells, the lettuce, tomatoes, salsa, sour cream, beans, uh, cheese, avocado. It's a little blurry. I made it a little <laughs> bit too big. But at any rate, looks like we have the all makings. the ingredients, the makings mm -hmm. of a taco. That's a taco watch. Here, we got a full on taco. It's ready to be eaten. It's ready to be eaten. This is a taco warning. So you see the difference, all of the ingredients, all of the makings, the conditions, everything is there. It's just not put together yet. That's a watch. When everything is put together and it's ready, assembled, assembled then it is a warning. And we all know um, based on weather reports of recent days, that when it hits the ground, it's that's when it is actually a tornado. Before then, it is a funnel. It right? is a funnel, yes. Um, but when it hits the ground, it is a tornado. So just make sure and that the there's no discrepancy. Right, yeah, we don't want to, any confusion. And the that. way that I've always, before I had this taco analogy to go from, the way I always remembered it, like I was telling Edie earlier, warning, takes longer to say it's more letters which means it's more destructive which means there's an actual tornado mm -hmm. somewhere cited because there has to be one cited mm -hmm. correct for a warning to be put into place mm -hmm. the watch just means the conditions are right yeah. for it yeah and so that's always the way i remembered it before mm -hmm. this taco now yeah but now her life has changed I know. forever i now it's, have the taco it's all about the tacos i'm gonna be like uh, are you saying we got shells or are you saying i'm ready to eat yeah, it's dinner time. It's dinner time, baby. Get in the cellar. That's right. Yeah. So, um, and tornadoes are forecasted. Uh, they use radar, satellites, balloons, computer models. I mean, we hear them talking about the computer model has changed. I mean, we hear those uh, that terminology anytime we're watching weather radar. Yes. Um, but here's a, so um, the warning time has grown from less than five minutes in the '80s to about 13 minutes um, and that was more current yeah now. more recent and mm -hmm. I'm sure it's even longer amount of time now but the National Weather Service which has its main research is uh, not too far from here not too far from here it's at the University of Oklahoma in Norman in their School of Meteorology right so um, I mean well placed right well we are in a placed. good area to uh, be yeah. warm yes exactly and you know i mean there are those people the researchers the scientists and kind of the um adrenaline is, junkies. adrenaline junkies yeah who feel the need to be out in the action during the tornadoes and um i mean i think most of us around here remember in 2013 when the National Geographic team, um, they were killed when they were trying to um, walk, uh, stay up with the tornadoes up by El Reno. And we're talking, and it was, they were trained, educated. It seems like they were in one of those vehicles. Yeah, not just a, tra a chaser vehicle, but you know, the ones that Have are like kind of equipped to like withstand. Yeah, but I can't remember. I could be wrong. I, I just know that, I mean, they are deadly and even the most skilled, mm -hmm. trained, educated people who have done this over and over and over, um, a tornado can be so unpredictable. Right. You're not gonna outsmart mother nature. Yeah, um, so just don't, I mean, if, if it excites you, if it, you think it's something you wanna be a part of, just be super Keep careful. Your distance. Yeah. I mean. You can still see what's happening if it's a tornado right. from well far away. Right. I mean, so. And they um, turn. That's, yes. That's they what do. happens. They do. A lot of the times. And I mean, we, we know the, the well, we're going to talk about safety now. We're going <laughs> to get into the safety part. Um, so we all know that we're supposed to go to the central part of the house or lower level, lower level, an area that doesn't have windows or a lot of glass. Yeah. And um, try to um, have something protective mm -hmm. to have. I mean, even if it's just a blanket, people have gotten 
down in bathtubs and put mattresses over them before. Pillows. Yeah. Heavy winter coats. Yeah. Something for the debris. If you have a storm cellar, uh, it's best to go underground. Mm -hmm. um, people have safe rooms in their houses now. And um, even though I think that those are probably really, really good, I can remember a town in Texas and the tornado leveled every single thing in that town. There was not one single thing left upright. And so, I mean, as, as good and solid as those rooms are, if you can get underground, it's probably for the best. But I mean, people survive a lot in right, those safe right. rooms. Um, so, uh, anyway, like you don't want to be outside watching it go overhead. Like, uh, Kevin and I did at the Walmart, not advised, <laughs> no. not advised no. basement is your best place or these interior rooms. Right. Um, if you are in a mobile home, get out as soon and as fast as you possibly can. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying don't wait till the last if, minute. So if you're there out, is a severe thunderstorm. You probably need to have a plan in place. Right, an area you can go to. Yeah, where are we going to go? Mm -hmm. uh, what are we going to, because even straight line winds mm -hmm. in a mobile home mm -hmm. could be super dangerous. Oh, yes. Don't be trying to drive in the middle of the storm either. Mm -hmm. Being in a vehicle. It's one of the most dangerous places. You absolutely. Um, so, uh, I mean, I... I read that you, if you were in a vehicle, it's safer to try to get in a low spot, a hole, a depression or something ditch. in the ground, a ditch, and hopefully it would go over you as opposed to trying to ride it out in your car. Right. Um, I have a friend who actually did that and it like sucked his shoes and socks off his feet. It sucked his glasses off his face. He survived, but he was shaken up for a while after that. I mean... Um, and you know, you've heard stories or you've seen mm -hmm. um, terrible things mm -hmm. have happened to people. So right. get inside, have a plan, have a plan and um, have an after plan. Like uh, where, where are you going to meet? Also, up if something yeah. happens into your house. Shoes. Oh, yes. Yes. Make sure that you have on not flip flops or, you know, something that were um debris yeah. and sharp objects can poke through necessarily real True. easy mm -hmm. you need you want to put on sturdy right sturdy shoes sturdy. running tennis shoes mm -hmm. or steel toed boots yeah I mean something. and I mean we have a cellar and our cellar door is in the floor of our bedroom mm -hmm. it's you can't see it you know we've got carpet it's carpeted and everything but that's how we get into our cellar well if our house gets hit by a tornado mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to come let us out of that cellar probably because it'll if, be on top of it yeah it, it most likely will be collapsed down on it so um that's one thing when we go to a cellar we always let someone know that you're down there that we're in our cellar uh -huh. so mm -hmm. um somebody could i'm starting to have anxiety thinking about <laughs> being stranded in my cellar <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway you should have a, a kit have some things with you first aid kit flashlight bottled water bottled water medication we yes uh we have one of those um crank a radio re weather radios mm -hmm. that um, doesn't require power right uh flashlight cash and an id spare keys for your cars charger for your cell phone even though you better have your cell phone charged. That's right. another thing. We we start charging our stuff. Yeah, and they have those portable things, batteries mm -hmm. too. You know, yeah, those charge that don't. Yes. Um, blankets or helmets or whatever if you're going to cover yourself. And if you have a pet, have a leash. Have them in a carrier, whatever mm -hmm. you might need for that. Um, and as my mother would say, be weather aware because uh, you just need to know what's going on. With people these days. I mean, we are so bad at our house. We are not watching network. No. Television. We're watching a movie. Went on Saturday, I wasn't. I was no, on, we, I was streaming. Yeah, we were watching a movie and I was like, 
Hey, pause the movie for a minute because I don't think sirens are fitting with this movie. I thought it was emergency uh, vehicles yeah. outside, like an ambulance or something. Yes, exactly. So we we went directly to the uh, like weather channel. Chan yeah, but still, um, you know, know what it looks like. Dark clouds, the roar, mm -hmm. a roaring sound, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of those things. And, and the weather service is so solid. They are so good about putting out information, even if it's miles away. Yes. And even if it's more of a warning than what you actually need, don't just blow it off right, every time. Right. Be pay attention and do your do your work mm -hmm. and make sure everything's okay. Um, if you have like denture things be sure you grab those before you go down in the cellar mm -hmm. it's important to have um Thank have you, your yeah. teeth right uh um <laughs> and uh anyway just you know be things be that, covered yeah things covered. that you don't want to lose or you yeah know, you don't want to sit there and take 25 30 minutes packing and all of that you know just have your main main essentials yeah ready to go i mean you might want to take some pictures with you I've, we've yeah, done that. I've done that. I um, was ready to Kevin has like this hard drive that he stores a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff on. He'll mm -hmm. grab that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some little things, but in the end, it's most important that you get right. yourself right. to safety. You cannot be replaced. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, um, and like you said, how about an after plan? Yeah. So in, in case you're not underground together, where are you going to meet up and, mm -hmm. you know, if something happens mm -hmm. with the house, right. Um, it's, you know, it could be, it, you, you just need to have those things planned and talk about them just so everybody knows. And if you live alone, have a neighbor or mm -hmm. someone close by, you know, that will check on you and you can check on them. Something. Right, right. Yeah, that's good. That's always good. So, but listen, I mean, we live here in Oklahoma. This is where it happens. And so we just need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And so this is just a little reminder for you guys. Um, pay attention know what's going on out there and stay safe yes stay, stay safe, safe. Yeah. yes now i'm scared <laughs> no, no i just tease mary's gonna have a little nightmares tonight yeah. so uh be sure and join us tomorrow uh jerry and kathy smyers our exhibit uh-huh our uh current featured artists are going to be here on trail talk with us and i think you're gonna love uh, meeting them and seeing their art and you guys you can always come here and see it in person that's too. right that's right so um i'll see you guys tomorrow again stay safe and weather aware that's right mm -hmm. yeah and until then happy, happy trails, trails.